Hey everybody, this is Greg Comparic of MobileCrunch.com here for TechCrunch TV. Uh, just got back from Apple's annual September event. Pretty exciting, I was live blogging that. Hopefully you tuned into that. Uh, we're here with Devin Coldaway of CrunchGear.com. Uh, so Devin, top three products of today. I think that definitely the iPod Touch is the winner today because uh, it's it really is providing just a great all-purpose device. You've got pretty much 90% of what the iPhone does. Uh, you've got dual cameras, you can do FaceTime. I mean, it could replace your home phone. If you guys, if you have, you and your loved ones had some. So I think that's definitely the winner. And then uh, the iPod Nano is actually a really cool little thing. I, I'm not sure if it's going to be as cool for, you know, runners and stuff who are going to be sweaty and have to have it on their arm and stuff. But it's it's a really cool device. And uh, I don't know, that's, that's pretty much my top two. I'm not really that excited about the, you know, the Shuffle or the Apple TV uh, or the new iTunes, really. But, you know, the 99 cent rentals for TV shows is... Uh, thing a million people are going to want to take advantage of. So I'll call that my third product. With the new uh, iPod Touch, the newer vision has a front camera and a back camera. Something's kind of weird about the back camera. What's up with that? Yeah, uh, so you know, the, the iPhone's back camera shoots five megapixel pictures, and they're actually pretty good. And of course, it takes 720p video as well. But the iPod Touch, it does 720p video, but it only takes really small pictures, 960 by 720. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. There's really no reason it should be limited to such a small resolution. So I'm thinking that they either artificially limited it or uh, there's something weird going on with the sensor. I don't know. We'll, it'll, we'll probably find out pretty soon. So the iPod Touch, the competition's already kind of had a hard time keeping up. Is, is the Zoom kind of screwed here? Or is everyone else toast for the, for the time being? Well, I mean, when you look at the price points, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Um, I mean, $299 for the... 32 gigabyte one, which I think is the best, the best sort of price for the for the performance. Um, I mean, there's really nothing that can touch it. I mean, every, things are going to be less expensive. Like the Zune HD, obviously, is a great device, and for around 200 bucks, you're getting a really great music player. But I mean, let's be honest, it's it's been like a year and a half, two two years now, I think, since it's come out, and there's there's no sign of any really substantial updates. You don't have the App Store. There's only a couple of apps. Um, I mean, the Zune HD is a great device, and there are others on the market, but if you're going to get a little handheld PMP, like the iPod Touch is far and away the best deal right now. Okay, so the new Nano, what do you think about it? I, I spent a little bit of time with it, and it's just, it's almost too small. It's a, uh, okay, imagine, take an, any iOS device, you know, uh, the, say the, the iPhone, and imagine just four icons on the home screen, that's how big the screen is. When you're holding yeah, it in yeah. your hand, it is so, so small. It's, it's, it's almost uncomfortable to use that touchscreen. Maybe it's because I was holding it in a weird way while I was you know, moving my camera around or, or whatnot, but I couldn't really get a grip on it where I thought, wow, I would really want to use this in uh, day to day. And also, I don't really understand. It looks, as far as I can tell, it looks like they're moving over to iOS. They weren't willing to say that it was iOS, but I can't think of why multi-touch or iOS are really necessary on a product like this. Yeah, it's, it seems a little showy. I mean, let's be honest, it's a really cool little device, but I don't know if it's actually that practical. Like, if you want something that small, generally you might actually just want something like a shuffle that actually has real buttons. You don't have to look at it. Uh, you know, you can just click. You can just. You don't have to worry about the touch screen and multi-touch. Like the fact that they had to use multi-touch to let you turn the screen in case you put it on wrong. Like, it kind of says like, uh, you know, they're they're just putting too much product into something like that for that kind of price point. It's kind of weird that if you look back at the last generation and all the things that they made a big fuss about, you know, they're like, wow, you can do video playback, and wow, you can do video recording. It's all gone. Yeah, I know. One of the great things about the iPad Nano or the iPhone Nano, or no, goddamn, the, uh, the iPod <laughs> Nano, <laughs> is, was that it was basically a, a little flip video camera at the same time as being a totally good, uh, very accessible music player. And I'm a little disappointed that they that they dropped that because honestly I thought it was a very good uh, value proposition for like 150 bucks. You got a video, you got music, you can watch little videos on it. I thought it was a good deal. Uh, you know the new thing is very cool, but as far as an actual practical device, I think the Nano is kind of lost part of the part of the savor there. Apple TV. Let's move into that for a second. One of the the down notes on that is that they've gotten rid of any sort of local storage. There's no hard drive built in, and there, there's seemingly no access to external USB drives. Uh, if you're going to want to stream any sort of your own video, you've got to do it from a remote computer that's, you know, on the entire time. How do you feel about that? Uh, well, it's it's either very forward thinking or it's just kind of boring. Like uh, it may be that I mean, if you if you want to buy into the Apple uh, ecosystem, then it's great because you're going to have your iMac on the whole time, running iTunes, and you're going to have your own uh, airport. Uh, 
your own home network that's running on Apple stuff, and it's going to be great. But if you're somebody who already who has like a couple extra drives that you like to fill up with stuff that you've downloaded, and let's be honest, stuff that you've gotten off of torrent sites and stuff like that, a lot of people have that stuff, and it's important to be able to access it. And also, you know, videos from way back, do you really want to put them all through iTunes and stuff? I think that people are going to find that the what the Apple TV can do, it does well, but it can't actually do that much, and it, certainly it can't do more than anything on the market. All right, so let's play soothsayers here for a second. We're going to make the assumption that the, the new iPod Nano and the, uh, the new Apple TV are both running iOS, because with the iPod Nano, it just looks so much like iOS that it would be kind of ridiculous if it's not running iOS, and with Apple TV, it's running an A4 processor. It's pretty obviously not, it doesn't seem like OS 10, so we can, it, it's pretty safe to assume that it's, it's running iOS. However, Apple's not willing to admit it. Uh, would, you, would you say it's safe to say? It, it's technically not iOS, the same iOS that's being distributed to you know, developers and stuff to develop apps for, but I think it probably shares a huge amount of the code, so probably, I mean, you can, you can see room for updates in the future, you know, maybe for apps, maybe for just expanding or sharing things between two iOS devices. So, you know, you might, you'll be able to use your, your iPod Touch as a, as a remote for the Apple TV or something like that, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, do you see uh, Apple TV getting an App Store? I don't see, I don't, I don't understand how you interact with the Apple TV. Like, is it, like, I don't think that there are many apps that are really accessible via the app, Apple TV. Like, what exactly, what, what apps are we talking about here? What would you do? on an Apple TV with an app. Oh man, you can do all sorts of things. So you could do like a, like a, a bus tracker, you know, let you know when your bus is gonna come. So it'd be like, oh crap, I have five minutes till my bus comes, I better get out of my house. Or you can do game stuff. Uh, assuming that the uh, Apple TV has Bluetooth, hook it up with the, uh, the, the new Magic Trackpad, you know, or use a, an iPhone or an iPod Touch to connect to it and do it over some crazy ad hoc Wi-Fi stuff. You know, it's kind of just like using your TV as a screen with like a kind of weak little Mac stuck onto it. Yeah, for sure. The, uh, the, the expandability for gaming at least is there. Not, you know, obviously not the most crazy complex games, but there are possible. Well, I was, just, I was just sorry to see that they didn't show a little more uh, like cool integration of other, uh, you know, iOS devices and, have, you know, have something like, oh, here we are playing a game, you know, and this is the controller and this is an app that, you know, we're encouraging this kind of development, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, I think I think that there's room for that. You know, it's still a brand new thing. Probably they want to see what the uptake is and see where people take it. Well, that's pretty much all we have to talk about today on TechCrunch TV about Apple's event today. So thanks for joining me, Devin. Yeah.